So I know everybody has gone back to school and some of you might have just entered middle school for the first time while other of you this is your second time, third time, um, but it's still kind of hard and you don't know how you're going to make it through the year. If that's the case then this video is something you should definitely watch all the way through. I will be giving you some tips and advice, things I wish I knew when I was in middle school, and things that are just going to make your life a little easier this school year. So I have my computer over here. Um, so if I look that way, that's what's going on. But this video is going to be split into multiple sections because I am really going to spill the tea. I'm going to give you all the advice. I'm not going to withhold this or make this into like a four part series. I'm literally going to stuff all of the information in this video so when you're struggling you can come to this video and watch it and find some encouragement from it. So that being said, we are going to be touching up on the topics of school, friendships, drama, dances, bullying, relationships, and lastly social media. So that being said, let's start off with school. So when it comes to school, obviously, everybody wants to strive to get good grades, but that's so much easier said than done. Personally, school was never something that came very easy for me. I am actually adopted from Ethiopia, Africa at the age of nine. So English was my second language. The first time I went to public school was when I was in fifth grade because my mom kept me at home to teach me English for like third and fourth grade. So I remember going into junior high, I was so scared because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do in school and I had to work really hard. Some things just didn't really come easy for me. But because I had to work hard in middle school, I learned how to work hard like literally the rest of my life. Until this day, I have good grades, not because I'm naturally smart, but because I know how to work hard and I developed good study habits and I learned how to stay organized. So I'm going to give you some tips on how you can do those things. You need to learn how to be organized and use a planner. I always, always had like a physical planner and I would start off the year like thinking I was going to use it and everything but for some reason like you know the school year would go and I like never used it but I started using this thing called Notion and it's like this really cute way to kind of like organize your life pretty much and I think you guys probably would find that more helpful if you're not into like actually like using a planner but I definitely recommend some way or another keep track of your assignments, uh, put down like what all you need to do that week, figure out when your practices are for sports or band or whatever, and find ways to work around that schedule so you can for sure have time to do your homework. I also really highly recommend you to keep your locker nice and clean. I know for most people, the first time you get a locker is when you enter middle school and it can be very tempting to just kind of make it a mess and shove all your papers in there, use one folder for every single assignment so you have no idea where all your assignments are. I know, very tempting. But if you want an easy life and actually get good grades and turn in your homework on time, you need to keep that locker clean. Also, make sure you have like a folder and a notebook for each class. You don't want to put all your paperwork, all your assignment into one folder because eventually you're going to have a lot of papers in that folder and it's going to be very easy to lose it. So I recommend you to have one folder for each class. Now let's talk about friends. So making friends in middle school can either be really hard or it could actually be even easier because in middle school you are going to have the opportunity to interact with a lot more people. You won't just be with your classmates. We're like in elementary school a lot of times you stayed with your class and the teachers like will move around and come to you. Where in middle school, you go around, yeah, you stay with your class, but you have the opportunity to interact with the other kids um, in the hallway or if you do sports and stuff, you have the opportunity to interact with like seventh graders, and eighth graders and whatnot. So that being said, I want to just go ahead and let you know that sometimes when you enter middle school, it could be hard to maintain the friendships that you had built back in elementary school just because all of a sudden you have more options to make new friends and that's okay I just want you to know ahead of time if you are not best friends with somebody that you were best friends with in 
fourth grade, fifth grade, that's okay. It's okay to go out and make new friends. But if you are struggling with making friends, I want you to know that you're not alone. It's okay. It's just intimidating sometimes to all of a sudden be thrown into a group and you're just supposed to figure it all out. And so if you're struggling with that, it's okay. And I want to let you know, like, eventually it will get easier. It may be hard to find your group, like, you know, first week of school. Um, but as you continue to go out throughout middle school, you'll start finding some of the people that have your common interests and people that you can build lasting relationships with. Speaking of friend groups, I have one of the most important tips and advice for you. So if you haven't been listening, listen now. The popular group is overrated. You do not need to break your back trying to be in the popular group because it really doesn't matter about what group you're hanging out with. At the end of the day, when you get to the real world after middle school or high school, nobody's gonna give a crap if you're popular or not. They're just gonna care whether or not you're nice and a pleasant person to be around. So be friends with people that you genuinely just enjoy being around with. Don't try to be friends with people just because they are popular. That, that is just something you don't want to get yourself into because it will get very exhausting very quickly. Now, let's move on to drama. Drama is something that is just unavoidable when you get to middle school. But the thing is, you don't have to be involved in drama. You can choose to stay in or out of drama. The choice is really yours. A really easy way for drama to happen is somebody talks bad about somebody else behind their back and then somebody else shares that news to the rest of the school and it just keeps going. And especially if you go to a small school, drama circulates like very quickly. <laughs> but you can stay out of that by one, when somebody comes to you and is like talking bad about somebody behind their back, you just listen and then say, okay. And then that's it. You don't, you don't pay any attention to it. Um, you don't have to tell them, I'm a good person and I will not be involved in drama. Like you don't have to be like that. You can just listen to them and choose to ignore it. Another way to avoid drama is if somebody is talking bad about you or if the drama is involving you, instead of going and talking to a whole bunch of people about it, just go to the source. Just be the bigger person and say, hey, I'm hearing you said this and this and this about me. Is that true? And a lot of times you'll find out that most of the truth was just really twisted and by the time it got to somebody else turns out it wasn't even what the original person said and you'll be able to avoid so much conflict if you just go to the person and just ask them like hey like what is going on like are you upset at me are you mad at me is there something i did to offend you please like enlighten me <laughs> so like, just go to the person talk to them and that's just like the quickest way to kill drama be the bigger person and go to the source Let's talk about dances. Okay, dances are one of the best parts of entering middle school because for once you get to do school dances. They can be a lot of fun, and but at the same time, they can be very stressful and cause drama again. <laughs> so some of my tips for you when it comes to school dances is one, you don't need to go with a date. I know that's kind of when we start like doing the whole relationship thing. We start dating and my your friends might be like asking dates to dances and you just quickly kind of start maybe feeling bad about yourself because you're not really going to the dance with a friend. And maybe your school doesn't do this, but I know most schools, that's kind of when they start, you know, going to dances with guys and stuff like that. So I just want to let you know, like you do not need to go to a dance with a guy. Like it's okay to just go to a dance with a group of friends. It's actually way more fun that way. <laughs> and when you go to dances, don't worry about like what people will think of you. Junior high and middle school, like that's the first time where we kind of start noticing how people dress different and whatnot. And we start seeing that like, some people that look a certain way are praised and other people are made fun of, unfortunately, and it sucks, it's so sad. But if you start experiencing that, I know it's so much easier said than done, but don't worry about it. Don't care about what other people are gonna think. If you wanna wear a particular dress 
and you feel beautiful in it, wear the dress. Don't think, oh, well, so-and-so is going to think I look fat in this dress or the guys are not going to like me because I look weird in this dress or whatnot. No, like, don't worry about what they're going to think. Wear the dress. That makes you feel the most beautiful. Let's go ahead and move on to bullying. Unfortunately, one of the hardest parts of entering middle school is the bullying probably gets worse. And again, this is because people start noticing that other people look different. And that's when we start kind of like noticing what our bodies look like and what we look like and whatever. And that can lead to some people being honestly very insecure about themselves. And a lot of times when people are insecure about themselves, they tend to want to make fun of other people. So my biggest advice when you are getting bullied is you need to find somebody that can speak truth into you because if you are constantly hearing negative things and bullies just you know talking down onto you you might start slowly like believing those things about you so do your best to i know this is like awkward and odd but like talk to your mom or your dad or like a trusted adult and be like hey like so-and-so's calling me this at school or they're kind of being mean to me and I'm not tattling but like is that true or like am I ugly or whatnot and I guarantee you like those people who've known you all their life they will be able to speak truth into you and show you that you're so much more beautiful than you think you are you're not dumb you're not stupid you're not all those things that those bullies say you are and um the people who really know you and love you and care about you are going to be able to speak truth into you. And when someone is speaking truth into you, that's when it's a lot easier to ignore those bullies. So really try to find people and reach out when you're going through those. I know a lot of times when you're getting bullied, it's so much easier to just like keep it inside and just not really tell anybody because who wants to go and like admit that they're getting bullied? Like nobody does. But if you don't speak out sooner than later, it might be too late and you might end up doing some things you regret and it might end up causing like a lot of issues later on in life. So be honest with others. Know that there are people who want to help you and there are people who care about you. And if unfortunately you are somebody that doesn't really have a home that is very loving and you don't really have like a trusted adult that is willing to speak truth into you almost every school has a school nurse or a school counselor and i definitely recommend going and like taking advantage of that go to a school counselor like that's what they're there for they're there to listen to you they're there to remind you the actual truth and they're there to also put an end to bullying okay now let's talk about dating so middle school is another stage of life where we start kind of the whole dating thing we start noticing people we're attracted to and everybody starts dating and so you feel like you have to start dating and whatnot so my very first tip for you is you don't need a boyfriend or a girlfriend it's totally okay to go through school and not date I know it's hard because everybody starts dating and it just seems nice like the idea of having a person and having somebody to snapchat all the time to text all the time send memes to and whatnot but there is also like a big negative side that you may not see like dating equals having to probably experience heartbreaks and heartbreaks are not fun but if you do end up having a boyfriend or a girlfriend that's okay as well so in that scenario my biggest tip for you is say you end up having a boyfriend or a girlfriend i don't want you to feel like you have to do anything you're uncomfortable with middle school might be the first time you will experience your first kiss which by the way if you guys want me to do a video on what to expect on your first kiss what my first kiss was like i can probably do that for you all <laughs> um so comment down below and let me know but yes middle school is kind of when you start dating and i just want to let you know like if you do enter a relationship you don't have to do anything you're you don't feel comfortable with just because your friends are on the kissing stage or holding hands stage or whatever it doesn't mean like you have to do that too so 
never feel pressured to do anything and if a guy or a girl is pressuring you to do something that you're not comfortable with doing that's probably a really good sign that you shouldn't be in that relationship now the very last topic social media social media is even bigger than when i was in middle school i'm in college now and the biggest social media that came out when i was in middle school was snapchat and i actually didn't even have a smartphone until i was a freshman so i'm so glad i didn't have to deal with that but now like most people have an iphone in middle school and a lot of people have tiktok and i just see so many of these like posts and i can't imagine how as a middle school especially a middle middle school girl how you guys must feel and deal with that because we see like a lot of times really perfect bodies and perfect lives portrayed in social media and it can be really hard to not feel like I don't know you're like less than or you're not pretty enough or skinny enough or curvy enough or all of those things that you should never ever have to deal with as a middle schooler so then my first tip I want to give you for social media is social media is fake half the time the posts you see are very very edited the pictures you see of girls are edited and people will not post themselves and their most vulnerable place like People will only post themselves when they feel the most confident. And so when you compare yourself to somebody on social media, you're comparing somebody's highlight reel to your real life. So don't do that. That is setting yourself up for failure. Just realize everything is pretty much edited and they probably don't even look like that in real life. So it's not fair for you to compare yourself thinking that that's what ideal beauty is or that's what you need to look and act like and last when it comes to posting on social media just think if you wouldn't want your grandma to see it then you probably shouldn't post it and do you know like when you post on social media like it does come back to bite you sometimes it really does so make sure you're not posting anything inappropriate don't be posting a picture of you half naked dancing on tiktok i know that's what's in right now but i promise you that's not something you're going to be very proud of later on in life um so again if you don't want your grandma to see it you probably shouldn't post it <laughs> so that is all i got for you i hope that was helpful i didn't mention this but i'm actually a life coach and i offer personalized coaching I started offering that because I have a lot of girls message me and they would say stuff like, hey, you talked about this and this on your YouTube video and I just need advice on X, Y, and Z. And I take my time to message them and stuff. But I started realizing like, man, it would be so nice if I could actually talk to these girls and give them like an hour of my undivided attention where we can really talk and get to the root cause of their problems and truly identify how they can get better. So because of that, I decided, you know, I'm going to offer that as one of my coaching services. It's something that you, you can do once a week, once a month, or whenever you're going through a hard time. If you end up going through a breakup, um, or if you're just now going into middle school and you are just having a hard time adjusting, you can just schedule an appointment with me and we can go from there. So if you're interested in that, um, check out my website, which will be linked in the description down below. Uh, feel free to follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I post a lot more tips and advice like this over there. Also, if you're interested in watching more videos like this, check out some of my other videos that I've made and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. But that is all I got for you. And until next time, bye.